man. Don't be a damn, go get you some money. Don't be a damn, go get you some money. Go get you some money, you out with none. Just bought a stick in the can with a hundred. Give me a lick in the can with a twenty. Shit, I always wish in the can with a hundred. I ain't standing on some nigga that done. We the one who drive the word to the country. Uh, if you could describe Puffy in one word. Puffy, Puffy, T Diddy, one word. Rap. If you can describe him one word, what would you say? Rap. Rap. So, I mean, has he even tried to do anything to help you in a situation? Absolutely not. You feel me? And, and I mean, it's not that he pulled through. Like, like I say, it's 25 years. You know, like 25 is a lot of fucking time, man. And for niggas to be facing, he was facing probation. For you to try to jeopardize 25 years of my life over probation? And the straight backs used to love the lean. You can't pay me down to taste that. No cut, no K rub. I wouldn't waste that. Like good pussy, make a nigga come and chase that. Now I see a nigga high as fuck, and I hate that. Probably cause I'm praying as I should with a shake set. It's a cold world, ain't nowhere where you say fat. Niggas all pookie with the toque and they lace that. Real niggas, real bitches, bring that back ASAP. Everybody capping now. All they say is no cap. Nigga post your paperwork, nigga like. Welcome back to the Big Facts Podcast. I'm Ayo Canseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Men 2 Movement. Um, and this is... Are you serious? Um, if you have not become a patron yet, you're about to miss the fourth installment of the How Do I Identify Nothing As Bitch series, which is How Do I Identify Nothing As Bitch by her social media. Also, on the Patreon, you have other different perks uh, dealing with our live streams and um, unreleased videos that you can't see anywhere else but the Patreon. So, if you really want to put some fat on your mind, uh, make sure you get to that Patreon. Um, what I want to ask is, is Puff Daddy going to sign 6 9 when he get out? Will Puff Daddy be against signing um, 6 9 to bad boy will he have an issue with that will he have a will it be a um a conflict of interest there or will he fit right in because let's look back i want y'all to hear something i think a lot of people are forgetting right now while we're talking about snitches and um I wanted to ask you, how did you get out of your deal with Bad Boy? Like when you got arrest, when you got locked up, is that when your um, whole contract with Bad Boy was ended, or how did that go? Yeah, when the dude told on me, if you feel me, he sent witnesses to try to testify against me and all that. I was facing 25 years, so you know anybody that would play with my life like that, you know, like it's not, it wasn't even a question. He knew what he had to do. I'm not no rapper. My life was for real, you know, I let that thing go off, so he knew what it was, you know, so I mean, you know, that wasn't even a, a negotiation or deliberation, like, you know, you told on me, so if you want to stay alive, like, you know, what would be, what would be your reaction once you get out and being that you're in the industry and, 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 and things being the way they are and everything, you happen to run across Puff, what would, what, what would be your reaction? We got good news and we got bad news. Hold on, hold on. But all my, all my habitual donators that always hear their name during the um, AO Nation donation conversation that we do every third Sunday, I salute you before we do anything. Um, to take your hard earn and to put it in something that you fuck with it motivates me beyond words period love the good news is this i'm going to continue to do the how to identify nothing as bitch series of course you know it's um a ao nation exclusive series so you have to go to patreon.com 
and become a patron um, in order to watch it. And once you become a patron, you'll be able to see all of the other unreleased episodes that I couldn't put on YouTube. Every Monday we go live on the Big Face Podcast channel at 7.30. A lot of y'all be late than a motherfucker, but we go live every Monday at 7.30. Um, if you're a lieutenant, you'll be given the privilege to call in and state your opinion at any point in time during the broadcast. Um, at 6.45, you'll be given a call-in number on your Patreon account, and we just go from there. For all my new people, if you want the uh, Are You Serious t-shirt, it's $15. The Big Face Podcast t-shirt is $15. The Me and Two t-shirt is $20, and the Big Face Podcast Scullies are $10. Uh, go to paypal.me forward slash are you serious 10 address, size, color, and what shirt you want. It's time for the bad news. The bad news is no one watches sponsored videos. So if you're a rapper and you're thinking that I'm going to get an IG sponsorship or I'm going to get a Facebook sponsorship. Nobody's watching this shit. So the numbers that they're telling you that you have are bullshit. And you know that bullshit because when you post after you did your sponsorship, your shit plummets. Even when you are running the sponsorship, your fucking YouTube numbers are bullshit. They're bullshit. Stop playing with yourself here on this show where we do not accept trash music we do not accept homosexual music and we don't accept that mumble rap bullshit the prices for promotion start at two hundred dollars they go up to two thousand depending on how much exposure you want they start there so if you don't have two hundred dollars there's no reason to come this way if your music is not up to par there's no reason to come this way i explain the packages as soon as you come in and say hey i got my budget together with the packages on. I'm not putting out no fucking price sheet so you can pass that shit to your fucking homosexual homeboy and send him my fucking way. Ain't no fucking price sheet because everybody can't get on this show. I want to see your motherfucking profile. I want to check, see what the fuck I'm fucking with. This show has integrity. That's why we rock the way we rock. But you keep paying that 25 $35 to a fucking sponsorship which no one sees they scroll right past it and you'll be a fucking 50 year old rapper and that's just what it is just shit you gotta be on I mean obviously I'm not gonna be taking another hand and popping no bubbly with him you know what I mean he's gonna have about 10 minutes to leave whatever I'm at if you could describe Pepsi in one word Pepsi Scrabble Puffy, T. Diddy, one word, rap. If you can describe him one word, what would you say? Rap, So, I mean, has he even tried to do anything to help you in a situation? Absolutely not. You feel know I me? Mean? And, and I mean, it's not that he pulled through. Like, like, I say he's 25 years. You know, like 25 is a lot of fucking time, man. And for nigga to be facing, he was facing probation. For you to try to jeopardize 25 years of my life over probation, there's nothing you could do. There's no money in the world that would allow me to stay in business with him. There's no money in the world that would allow me to get right with him. And it's just like he violated the ultimate rules, man, and I live by honor. You know, I'm a doubt. All right, as we just heard that, um, what is... Well, let's let's first look at it and say, how deep is law enforcement um, tied in um, with this uh, music industry? At this point, we really do have to wonder this. Um, is there a difference? Is there a difference here? Um, at the time, this was 1999 when this took place. This is where Shine uh, protected Puff Daddy from being robbed outside a nightclub. Um, and Puff Daddy repaid him um, by testimony. And not only that, but sending a witness in the courtroom to testify against him. Um, 
I think to understand the gravity of this whole situation, you would have to be somewhat in the streets um, to know what that feels like for someone that you are trying to show your loyalty to just to, you know, stick the knife in there and turn the motherfucker, man, and... It's until you see you've been in places where you see what informants, snitches, rats, what they do to people's lives simply because they don't want to do they don't want to like, no, nah, I'm not going to jail. I'd rather you go to jail. Um and it's usually that person closest to you. This is why it's so important um, for you to go to the Patreon and find out what the white boy test is. If you have any uh, female in your life and you out there in the street, you have a female in your life and you want to see whether or not she's really thorough like that, um, go to the Patreon, find out what the white boy test is then use a white boy test. I've had three people come back and tell me that they did it, and um, all three of them say that uh, the girl failed. Um, doesn't have to be a girlfriend. It could be your auntie, whoever is with, with you with this uh, street shit. But how deep is law enforcement um, into this culture? Um... They say every good police officer has, you know, snitches and confidential informants wherever they, you know, wherever they are. Um, so I guess if you're a hip hop police, you would have to have some artists on your side that can tell you the inner workings of the, the behind the scenes details of what the fuck is going on. Um, to hear... If you haven't heard um, the wiretaps of Mel Murder and Jim Jones on the phone, go listen to that. Go listen to that. That was such a big deal to me because it proved that an investigation is some. It's like an infestation, like a like an infection. It can spread to unrelated parts of the fucking body. Jim Jones had nothing to do with 6 9 directly, but indirectly he had someone that was in the situation, and just by talking regular street talk about the situation, you hit, because everyone around that motherfucker had a fucking tap on their shit. So if you talk to any one of the motherfuckers that was around that epicenter, and you said anything gangster, you hit. And this is the main situation that we need to talk about is there is no tiptoeing. There is no straddling the fence. And this is why. This, this is why. This is why around me, you can't even smell like weed. You can't even smell like weed. If you're not trying to do something legitimate... With, I'm, nigga, I'm, I'm not even talking about... Nigga, you can't even be scamming shit like nothing. You're not going to pull me into no investigation just because I want to be cool with all the street niggas. Yeah, I'm the nigga that's out of the game, but yeah, you know, I'm still tapped in with all the street niggas. I, I can still get you what you want. Because as a real street nigga, we understand you don't have to be doing a mother... You can connect one person to the next person and catch a fucking conspiracy charge. Going to jail and dying are two of the most easiest things that you will be able to do in this fucking life. If you're out of this shit, then be out of it. The last thing that you want is to be out of this shit and just because you're trying to do somebody a favor or because you're trying to make sure the niggas know that you're official, rap trap shit. You connect the nigga to one of the niggas that, that you used to know. 
You got this new rapper coming up and, and or his homeboy. So the new rapper come up, his homeboy like, shit, what y'all niggas getting it for down there? Shit. And you got to prove to them that you, like, yeah, nigga, I'm connected, nigga. I know something, nigga. I be knowing what's going on. I know I, we got them real numbers, nigga. Just so a nigga can say on a video, oh, that nigga, they're official. Oh, yeah. Niggas in Philadelphia will say to the Alabama nigga, oh, yeah, they know something down there now. Oh, yeah. Them niggas is thorough. Them niggas is thorough. Them Johns down there. Yeah, like, nah, nigga, I don't give a fuck about that shit, nigga. We rappers. We rappers. We in this industry. Any nigga coming up talking that motherfucking, nah, my nigga, ain't none of that. We ain't doing that no more, nigga. The fuck kind of time as you want. And I hope that at this point in time, this sets a precedent. All of you should be moving. Everyone at this point in time should be moving as if they are under investigation. It was shown that people that were uninvolved were brought into a fucking real deal. Like, who the fuck can't go to jail? As my big homie just said, if they don't bring Jim Jones in, it's because they don't want to. What Jim Jones was saying damn near sounded like he was commanding the fucking ship. And they can make it look like that in court. I, 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 daily, you know, uh, no cap. Baby Soldier just got a murder charge. TJX6 just got hit for the fraudulent checks. You coming to, I might have to put this on the rap trap uh, the fucking platform. You coming to this rap shit and it damn near seems like it's easier to go to jail. So if, if law enforcement wants to goddamn um, uh, bam a motherfucker, all they got to do is talk to their people, they a and or whatever the fuck people in the industry that own favors because maybe they caught them one night with an ounce of coke and they didn't take them to jail. Like, hey, I'm going to need a favor one day. All right, all good. Just please don't take me to jail. Tell the a &R, hey, man, look, there's a rapper down here um, that's friends with someone that we have under investigation. We want you to bring, uh, let's see if you can bring him to Sony so he can start, you know, talking about the shit that, you know, we're trying to get them, uh, bring them to the, we're trying to bring them to the light. Trying to put a spotlight on them. Once a nigga get a deal, he don't stop talking that street shit. Every nigga in the street got a homeboy that do music. Every nigga in the street is attached to this rap industry, this rap culture. If at this point in time, you don't look at this rap shit like this is the fucking holding cell before you go to the back, you don't know shit about nothing. This rap game is the holding cell before you get sent to the back. Them up north niggas, they call it the bullpen. Everybody, every rapper is going to jail. If we want to be able to see more vividly what the fuck you got going, if we want to bring that shit to the forefront, we just put one of your fucking homeboys on or put you on. You won't be able to stop. Your homeboys won't be able to stop. You don't have enough control. Y'all don't have enough control. You're not organized enough to say, I think these motherfuckers is on to us. We probably need to get the fuck out the goddamn streets. If you're in the streets and you don't think that you're under investigation right now, my nigga, you'll be in jail in three to six months. If you're not moving like you already under investigation, my nigga, you'll be in jail in three to six months. I guarantee it. Coming from somebody who did it in all facets, in all ways. Um, back to the main question. With all of these um, rumors and rumblings and mumblings of all of these fucking people in this industry that have skated past certain charges with no repercussions, how can we not feel as if law enforcement is putting fucking rappers, rappers disguised, putting rapper costumes over officers, over confidential informants? The pyramid fucking scheme 
they go get a little motherfucking A and R for an ounce and let him go, then he gets another fucking artist higher on the pyramid. They let them go, then let them go and let them go. All these people work for the fucking law. You're not gonna know where it comes from. I'm I'm, I'm talking about going as far as um and this is the fucking problem. Y'all put the motherfucking police titles on the goddamn bloggers and interviewers when you should put it on the rappers, the managers, and the fucking promoters. The people that are inside and know what's going on. Nigga, please. Nigga, sitting back here asking questions. My nigga, obviously you don't know nothing because you asking the fucking questions. But the nigga in this squad, he know exactly what's going on. We can go down the list. We can go down the list of artists that are in jail right now. And we don't know how information was found out. How, where the fuck did this shit come from? I believe that there are people in this industry. What you call, if you call Charlemagne a gatekeeper, then there are there's someone below them that's moving around the industry as an invisible. Somebody like uh Lower than Leo Cohen, somebody who act, it's like an A&R person, someone who moves around and is not seen. It's like the invisible person. There is someone who is coming in contact with all of these artists, but no one takes it in consideration like this is the fucking person who's hidden us. Somebody that's you, you, so insignificant that you wouldn't even think of that you will actually talk about crime in front of them. You'll, uh, show, you'll roll your blunts. Pop pills, sip lean in front of them. And I believe there's multiple fucking invisible men within this goddamn industry. At this point in time, with these, I'm overwhelmed, nigga. I'm over, you have no idea how many videos that I have to fucking do. The easiest fucking person to send to jail is a fucking rapper. Why are they only signing artists that are can go to jail? If we know that all of this fame shit, all of this shit can be manipulated, then why are we not thinking? How in the fuck did TJ86 just rise to the top? YouTube chooses who the fuck they put, so to speak, they run the shit. If they wanted to, let's say you um you um social media sponsorship bullshit rappers. Who uh, pay for your sponsorship. If they wanted to. They can put your fucking video on everyone's timeline. Everyone on Facebook. Everyone on Instagram. But they give you a, a selected few. They run the shit. They can make a star out of fucking nowhere. They can run your numbers up. They can verify you. I don't. Who the fuck verifies people? We've seen people verified um, at 46,000. And some people that ain't verified. They got 200,000 fucking subscribers. We had to understand that this internet was nothing more than the police saying, I'm tired of having to run after these people physically. Let's put them somewhere that we can see everything. Bring Facebook, bring a back page, bring Twitter, bring, point, bring everything here so this is where they're going to want to be. Let's make it comfortable to be here. Come on, this shit goes so goddamn deep when we start thinking about it. Um, this, this, this sim shit, this... I never played the game Sim, um, but I'd be damned if, you know, they're, they're trying to right now make the, the robots to where you don't even got to leave your house. I mean, like, we have Sims right now. Dog, you can be killed for what your profile says. If your profile says, fuck the BDs, fuck the GDs, of course it won't be that fucking blatant, but if it says something that you know shouldn't be said like okay some niggas who got some under underlying beef with uh otf dirk and them whatever and they account just out of nowhere say i wish them fuck niggas would like just some shit to where they know it's beef like nigga them niggas talking stupid your account is you how is that not like a fucking surrogate how is that not like a fucking body where my account could be taken as serious as me saying it out my fucking mouth 
when 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 reporters want to show um how messy a bitch he is or, or look what the fuck they show your fucking profile uh president trump a war can be started if somebody hacks into his fucking account the street shit is over it is over To say that you're still trying to make this street shit work. And then you niggas, I come home, my nigga. You can't sell dope secretly. You niggas is selling dope publicly. Plenty lean, nigga. You know what it is, nigga. Plenty lean, fuck, nigga. You know we got it, fuck, nigga. Just, I'm trying to just brandishing hundreds and, and, and diamonds and just all this shit like and letting it be seen because of course you wanna you want to be known they like bitch I got that money so bitch when I come around you need to fuck something everybody know I got that money but when you say that do you think that everybody does also include law enforcement it seems like as technology gets smarter we become more fucking primitive Oh yeah, I fuck with that Snapchat because that shit be gone at 24 hours. So I know they can't fuck with it. So shit, they can't even use that shit in court. And then you got real deal human cameras like Takashi 69 who I've already spoken about that situation. This is why it was even I didn't even want to bring this to the but it, 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 I think it's a very interesting um, theory to say is there is there somewhere in this industry is there somewhere in this industry where all the people who have worked with law enforcement can go and still make music because we've seen how when certain people work with law enforcement and cases just disappear, shout the choke no joke. I've said this once, I've said it before, but I wish I had that type of fucking courage to come out and say and, and, and break those type of stories. And I hope that they don't peep the people don't try to corrupt that fucking platform. I hope that that platform continues to stay pure. Um, because he's giving out real deal shit that niggas would not have known. Um, and this is why I'm such a big um, advocate for us to be attached to our wisdom, which is our elders. My big homie, like, if he wouldn't have brought this to my attention, I would, I like, History can continue to repeat itself. Every time you get a hot artist, they have a run-in with the police. The case get dismissed. They do some bullshit in court, and it, but they just keep on winning. Who makes those decisions is what I'm saying. I think that we are at such a hive mind and we're so easy, easy to deceive. Um, because there's so many sheeple and not that many people around that. And well, I fuck that shit, man. You know, this everybody's with this slapping hand. I fuck that shit. This shit sounds good. I'm just here for the music type shit. Um, that if you had, if you had help from these powerful people, like what we just seen with Antonio Brown, like, are you fucking serious? You piss off. One of these, and shout out to my NFL insider, you piss off one of these 32 fucking men and they can bring hell's fury down upon you. A unnamed, a unnamed fucking um, painter comes out and says that Antonio Brown made sexual advance. What the fuck is a sexual advance? I talk to you? What the fuck are you talking about? Now the media says he sends threatening messages? What the fuck was threatening about bitch stop lying? You lying on me. 
President Trump has made more threatening fucking uh, messages than that. But we did all uh, fuck that shit, man. We just roll with the fucking punches and we make goddamn memes. Antonio Brown, I speak to you and all the other NFL players and other successful black men that have not been fucked over by this um, potential fucking uh, monster that's going to take everything that you have that is the Me Too movement. Why the fuck would you not support the Men Too movement? Cause it's all good. You're just on top, and that's and that's the issue. I give it to them. They do have a lot of fucking ammunition over there and a lot of fucking power. But we can say that we have something over here instead of just making fucking tweets and posts and shit like that. You have somebody saying, "Hey, man, I'm ready to do the fucking work. I'll take the first three fucking steps. Show me some support. Show some love." You can do it, um, what is it, unanim unanimously, uh, anonymously, steal nothing, because it's not a big deal to you until it's a big fucking deal, and this is why it continues to happen, because we so easily forget the past, no matter how fucking recent past, far past, fuck it, we're on to the new thing. But tomorrow is going to be you. You, the, the, the successful black man that's watching this video, is going to be you. And you're not going to have any support system because they're going to alienate you and put you on an island just like they did Bill Cosby. To where if you, just like they did R. Kelly, to where if you say anything good about this person and you're a fucking pedophile and you're a fucking rapist. How is this done? It's done through the powers that be. We're not the powers that be. All we can do is talk about it, make a, a post about it. We just watching the fucking game. We're onlookers. The people, the powers that be will never be seen. The fucking puppeteers. And I think the puppeteers of entertainment are the puppeteers of entertainment. Any form of it. Sports. Um, music, movies, it's all one fucking group of people saying, yeah, he's, yeah, get him, get him, yeah, keep him, keep him, I think we can use him, and they have minions, and the minions would be the, the law enforcement who just get an anon anonymous tip saying, oh, and I, it doesn't even have to be anonymous, but it's like, because you motherfuckers make it so goddamn easy. TJX6, what the fuck, my nigga? Like, are you serious? But that that's what it is. I'm asking, is snitching snitching or is it only snitching when we decide that it's snitching? Are we against rats? Are we going to treat... Puff Daddy the same way that we treat Takashi 6 9 Is it different because he's a producer slash CEO? Is snitching snitching? Or is it is it yeah, it's different because you cause people to go to you cause people to lose their freedom. You cause people to lose their freedom so that you can have yours. Y'all let me know. Big Facts Podcast. Maybe Rap Trap. Make sure you hit the Patreon. Make sure you hit the PayPal or the Cash App. I'll see you on a minute. Love, love.